Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. This video that I'm making right now is probably gonna get about zero views because I'm reviewing a movie that basically no one has ever heard of. And that's a real shame because this movie is one of the most visually striking films that I have ever seen. Malatesta's Carnival of Blood from 1973. Chances are, you've never heard of this film. Not many people have. In fact, this film was believed to be a lost film for almost 30 full years. Then, in the early 2000s, it got a DVD release from the director's only copy. And even better yet, Arrow Video released a Blu-ray version in 2017 as a part of their American Horror Project. Step right in. No, no, no. Don't be afraid to bring the children. We have special treats for children. This movie was destined to be terrible. It had a first-time writer, a first-time director, a bunch of no-name actors, and a minuscule budget. The writer never wrote another film script. The director never directed a film again. The acting is atrocious, the narrative is almost non-existent, and the pacing, well, it's inconsistent. It's a terrible film on almost every single level, but somehow, somehow, it's amazing. It's not so bad it's good, no, just simply amazing. Director Chris Spieth made one of the greatest and worst horror films of all time. That's quite the honor. His work was slow, but meticulous, which leads to some amazing shots. But that has its shortcomings too. He didn't have time to film some of the scenes, so he had to do a wide angle shot on a single take. He often only had time to shoot a scene from one angle, so it destroys the pacing because of the lack of visual options he had while editing. As stated earlier, the narrative is almost non-existent. It does try to have a story, but it's just so poorly done. But that's not really the point of the film. If you can watch this film and understand the narrative shortcomings, then hopefully you will love and appreciate what this movie does have to offer. It's a visual and auditory experience. It's not all good, but when it's good, it's great. But mentioning the plot and the narrative means that I should probably talk about the story just a little bit. Um, it's really not that important and the plot's all over the place, so this should be pretty quick. The Norris family gets jobs working at an old dilapidated carnival. Here we meet the daughter, Vina, and a worker at the park, Mr. Blood. Mr. Blood and the other employees of the park are pretty bad people, and some even seem to be zombie-like cannibals. We have a weird-eyed zombie worker who looks pretty memorable. Vina falls in love with this park worker. We'll just call him love interest number one. That night, two guys sneak into the park. One gets decapitated on the roller coaster and the other one dies by the hands of the weird eyed zombie man. Scratch that. He might not actually be dead. We follow the twitching body all the way down to the cavern at the bottom of the carnival, where we see the cannibals eat this poor guy alive. Love interest number one realizes something is up. 
and makes Vina meet him at the carnival grounds at night. Bad things start to happen to the two lovebirds, and the parents realize that Vina is missing. So they go out in the night to find her. Suddenly, it's the next day. We meet love interest number two trying to find Vina, but Mr. Blood tells him that their camper burned down in the middle of the night, killing the entire Norris family. Love interest number two decides to look for them. Then it's suddenly night again, and the parents are still out looking for Vina. <sighs> okay, this film is all over the place, and it never remains consistent. The rest of the film is really trippy and honestly feels like a dream. We have a ton of plastic on screen and this very artificial feeling. The set designers wanted the cannibals to take the trash from the carnival and use it to build their homes. It's a unique look and very visually appealing. Mela Testa's Carnival of Blood almost feels like a spiritual successor to Carnival of Souls. Both are surreal films that have dreamlike qualities to them. I saw someone mention online that this film has a very Lynchian feel to it. I tend to disagree with that. Barry, Barry, not yet dead. Stupid Johnny, use your head. Put your feet where evil stand. The knife cuts quick. The blood pours red. Stupid Johnny, use your head. Barry, Barry, not yet dead. Well, okay, maybe it has a little bit of Lynchian in there, but it definitely does not have the same skill or finesse that a Lynch film may have. This is a rather amateurish film, but that's what makes it special to me. That's what makes it unique. It's unconventional. No seasoned filmmaker in their right mind would ever make a movie like this, and that's what makes it worth the watch. This film bleeds horror imagery. It would be a perfect film to put on the background at your Halloween party. It's visually striking, but the whole movie doesn't really need your full attention. I'm into art house films to a certain degree. I love seeing filmmakers trying to tell a story in an unconventional approach. It's novel, and I enjoy it. I understand, though, that not everyone likes that or even wants that in a film. I understand why this film could be hated. It's definitely not for everyone, but for me, it hit a lot of the right notes. The lows, yeah, are rather low, but the highs are some of the highest that I've ever seen. So I rate this film at seven red bubble wrapped mouths with styrofoam cup teeth out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and take care. <laughs>